Hey, it's Charlie. Thanks for uh, viewing the channel. And today we're going to cover the 2020 and a half KTM 450 factory edition. Uh, the bike is pretty much stock except for some minor things that we've done to the bike. Um, when I originally got the bike, um, we did suspension through AEO and I love the suspension. Then we had an opportunity to go to um, larger forks, which is pretty rare to see the factory forks on the bike. Um, so we redid these forks and then we actually did a factory shock as well. So sort of blessed to know the right people to get the suspension and uh, it's definitely a lot stiffer. Um, I think it's cool to have the suspension for me since I'm not like a pro rider and not doing supercross, it's probably a little overkill for motocross for what I'm doing. But what's amazing with the forks especially is you could overshoot any tabletop or jump and you're not gonna kill yourself. Uh, I've had so many times where I've overshot jumps and then I land and like literally hitting my, my head or chin on the crossbars because I'm coming down so hard. And these literally soak it up so well. So money definitely worth spending, but on the small little bumps and braking bumps, um, I haven't done it enough to get all that harsher stutter out. Um, but on the big jumps, this thing is king. Uh, so you'll never have to worry about over jumping with this suspension, that's for sure. Uh, we had to also, with doing that, we had to go with a different hub and axle for the front. Um, so uh, we got these wheels from that particular person that hooked us up. Um, we also went with the FMF full exhaust. And you guys might notice a little trickery here and where that came from. We also did the Thai foot pegs and we have the recluse clutch in it. So it's an auto clutch. I still use the clutch a lot just because I'm used to riding the two strokes and I don't want to get out of habit of doing that. Um, but still nice to really have it. Um, unlike the Amro bikes that I will ride and race, if you're on really steep inclines and stuff, it's great to have because it, you're not going to stall the bike. Um, so I'm a big fan for that auto clutch system. Um, but I still ride it like you're using the clutch all the time. Uh, what else do we do to the bike? Uh, that's about it, to be honest. Uh, the suspension made the biggest difference on the bikes. Uh, I'm about 195 pounds and the stock suspension was a little too soft for me. Um, so that was the biggest change. Um, in comparing this bike, I get a lot of questions of like, well, which KTM do you like the most? I have a 350 four stroke, I have a 300 and a 500. And the 450 is, believe it or not, the easiest to ride, um, just because you just twist the throttle and it'll get you out of anywhere. It will actually make you a lazier rider in my eyes, um, just because it's just, you have all the power, you'll get easy to grunt out of anything, especially out of turns and stuff. The 350, if I was gonna have one bike, I'd probably still do a 450 personally, but the 350 is probably your best all around bike if you're gonna do trail riding to motocross tracks, just cause it, it does feel a little bit lighter, more agile, and you could stay on it a little bit more. Um, it just seems to rev out more. And for some reason, maybe that, that mental mindset of it being a little bit lighter bike in my eyes or something, which might only be like a couple pounds for all I know, but I, I tend to focus more and carry my speed more on the 350 than the 450. 450 again, I'll get lazy, where the 350 I really need to focus more on maintaining my speed in and out of the turns. Um, and so I think the 350 makes me a better rider. Um, the 450 makes me a little more lazy. And then if we go to the two stroke, um, for the KTM 300, this is a 2021, and this bike is a blast to ride. Um, we did, I did my first AMRA race at ACP, which was in January of 2021. Got fourth place, I'm a green plate guy, so not an expert. And uh, it was half 
off-road and through sand and everything, deep sand, and they use the national and vet track and the vintage track all in one. So I think we did like six laps. And this bike was amazing. I probably should have used the 450 going onto the motocross track, but this bike is so much fun if you're a two-stroke guy or even if you're not. Um, and even though it's geared more for off-road trail riding, it's so light and nimble that it just makes riding it a blast. And I'm really curious, and we'll do this in the near future, we're gonna compare these three bikes and bring them out same day, same track, same conditions, and see how close the lap times are. Uh, I think you're gonna be surprised with the results, so stay tuned for that. But it would be tough to not want to have this bike in if you're only gonna have like three bikes, because when you ride this bike, it's so light and nimble. It is so quick through the desert and single track riding. It is, it's like, should be illegal compared to riding these two bikes on a single track, because it's so light and nimble and easy to ride. And then you take that on even on the motocross track and with the suspension done, AEO did a complete, you know, these are new forks, compares to stock forks and suspension and totally made a difference with the bike. I'll take this some days and just ride this on the motocross track and have an absolute blast on it. And then the 500, um, we use primarily just uh, street legal. So I'll ride that literally from the house and up into the trails and just cruise with that. It's a little bit bigger, beefier bike. You definitely feel the weight, but for somebody that just wants something to ride from their house to the trails and back, killer bike. So. I uh, hope you like this content and any questions, let me know below. If you are, you can tell I'm a big KTM guy. Um, Jeremy and Sonic at AEO and Marietta and here in Arizona, they have two locations, um, can hook you up with the right bikes and they do all my service, have been amazing. They do all my suspension on these bikes, have been amazing. Um, so I can't see enough to those guys, but again, a huge proponent of KTM. Um, I've not had any issues on the four bikes that you see here and I uh, can't say enough about KTM. But do you have any comments or preferences of which bikes you like the most out of your KTMs? Post below, we'll talk.